Welcome, sir, from the upcoming. Such a pleasure to meet you. Um, maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to the old oak. What can people expect from the film? Well, first of all, I hope they'll. Um, I hope they expect a great story. That's the least you can expect from a film. And um, I'm very lucky to have found out absolutely wonderful actors and a real sense of community, yeah, both from the Syrians and also the people in the little villages that we see. So there's a there's a there's a great range of characters, and um, I think there's great warmth and humanity in the story. So I, I hope people will really enjoy it. You've been working with Ken Loach for such a long time. What is it about collaboration that, that, that you both get so much from? Um, what do you like so much about him as a director? The, um, well, we've been lucky. I think we've done about 14 feature films together, so it's been a, a long run. But um, he's a remarkable director, you know, really one of, one of... He's a very demanding collaborator, but he's also very, very generous, and he's also great fun. But we have two different jobs. I write, he directs, and we meet in the middle as, as filmmakers. Uh, and what's lovely about him, no big ego. We just try and sort out the problems as best we can. And um, so we've really had a remarkable run. And I think he's been absolutely immense in this film because this was a really tough film to shoot. Um, I mean, the casting must have taken six months, you know, to do that. So that would have exhausted people, you know, in their 30s, never mind a sprightly octogenarian. And there seems always such urgency in your films, and you could sort of see this as a trilogy, if you like, with I, Daniel Blake, and Sorry We Missed You, and this time sort of tackling immigration. Why was this story so important to tell? Well, there's a big, big canvas to this. I mean, the, the world is full of great conflict, climate change, people are on the move. You see a vicious government just now with stereotypes and scapegoats, and I would say, you know, sows hatred and incitement to hatred. The Sue Ella Braverman talking about invasion of small boats after a place was firebombed by the far right. I mean, that's an absolute disgrace. So what we do here in this story is we get to know the characters. We get to see where they've come from. We understand their motivation. We understand the fears of the local host community too, so we don't want to stereotype them under. And what we think we'll do in these times of populism and stupidity and violence is to try and understand. And to understand means intelligence to, to, to turn, untangle things. And to also empathy, to put yourself in the shoes of both the people who live here and also the people who are arriving. So there's no black and white on this. What we try to do is untangle it and tell a really, really strong story. And we've been very, very lucky because we've found some absolutely brilliant actors and I hope people will enjoy that. I think that's exactly right. It's not about kind of making it like the villains and the good guys whatsoever. And so, in, you know, in that sense, what do you hope people will take away? There's a sense of hope despite kind of the bleak subject matter. Well, hope is a, it's a very small word, but it's got many layers to it. You know, and I think hope is made up of many elements. You know, and um, St. Augustine 1,500 years ago said that hope is two beautiful daughters. Anger at the way things are because there's great inequality, there's great hatred, but the courage to try and change things. And in this film, you know, we met some remarkable people, you know, who humble, intelligent, smart, holding out the hand of friendship to both communities and thereby people beginning to understand each other and that's the way we will confront the far right. And, you know, how do you believe there is the power in cinema to change people's minds, change things? And um, I don't know if it might be this final film or do you think you'll work together again? Well, I mean, this was a very, very tough film to shoot. Ken is now 87. He's my friend first. And um, I know he'll go on to do many, many creative things in the future. But, I mean, it'd be unfair to ask him, to f just the sheer physical effort of doing a feature film over such a length of time would be, would be too much. But he's going to be active, fighting, teaching, encouraging. He's going to be in his sauce for a long time to come. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed the evening. Congratulations on the film. Thanks.